Welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with New York Times bestselling author, John David Mann, who's here to share with us the new thriller, Blind Fear. Co-authored with retired Navy SEAL Brandon Webb, the Finn series of books is filled with action, adventure, and this is just a book you will not want to put down. So John David Mann is an award-winning author whose writings have earned the Nautilus Award, the Axiom Business Award, Taiwan's Golden Book Award for Innovation, and the 2017 Living Now Book Award Evergreen Medal for Contribution to Positive Global Change. He co-authored the worldwide classic The Go-Giver with Bob Berg and four New York Times bestsellers. His books are published in 38 languages and have sold more than 3 million copies. So let's welcome to the show, John David Mann. Thank you so much. It's great to be back here, Marion. Oh my goodness, what an honor it is to have you here and to talk about this. I know so many people are so excited. I'd love for you to share a little bit about the other two books with us before we start talking about Blind Fear. Sure, yes, because it is a series. And uh, you know, people ask all the time, is it, do, you, do I have to start at the beginning? Can I jump in the middle? Will I be confused? And my answer to that is always, I guess, you could start with any one of the three books because uh, each one is a self-contained mystery, but there is a continuity. There is a larger arc to the three stories. So to your question, the first book is called Steel Fear, and that goes back to 2021 that came out. And that begins the story of Chief Finn, no last name, or at least we don't know his last name. We're not even sure if he remembers his last name. Finn has memory issues. He's an outstanding Navy SEAL sniper who's legendary for his, his photographic memory, but he's got gaps in his memory. He has profound trauma in his childhood. He has just been, as the story opens, through a fairly profound traumatic event on the battlefield, which involved a series of war crimes that we just learn about gradually as the series unfold, uh, and which ultimately he is accused of committing. And he didn't commit them. Or at least he's pretty sure he didn't commit them. Um, so, so Chief Finn is, is pretty fascinating character from the start. Uh, Steel Fear takes place on an aircraft carrier, and it is basically like a locked room mystery. There's a serial killer uh, on this aircraft carrier. The locked room is a uh, vessel the size of the Empire State Building with six thousand souls on board, and so that's six thousand suspects. Um, not not too small a suspect pool. And Finn, of course, comes under suspicion for for being the serial killer himself. And again, he's pretty sure he's not. Uh, That's Steel Fear. By the end of that book, he has escaped and is now a fugitive on the run in the second book, which is called Cold Fear. And that takes place in Iceland. And I had a fabulous time researching Iceland, which is a fascinating, wild, bizarre, gorgeous environment and a very fascinating culture as well. And uh, the whole book takes place in Reykjavik, Iceland, uh, where Finn is on the hunt for some other seals that he believes hold the key to what happened to him that he can't remember. They're in the battlefield. He escapes again at the end of Cold Fear, uh, spoiler alert, and um, everybody will guess that because there's a third book. And that one just came out. That's called Blind Fear, which finds Finn in Puerto Rico hiding out on the little island of Vieques. All these tropical and interesting places that we find ourselves in with this book, in this book series. I I also understand that your co-author is Brandon Webb, the Navy SEAL. Yeah, Brandon. uh, Brandon and I have written seven or eight books, I guess eight books now together. Uh, We started out back in uh, about a decade ago with his memoir. I, I was the writer for his memoir. It's called The Red Circle. Uh, it was a New York Times bestseller. It was it was the beginning of our writing relationship. And it was when Navy SEALs were just uh, kind of having a boom in public consciousness. We just had the situation where Captain Phillips had been kept, uh, captured by three Somalian pirates right, who took his boat. And everyone knows that story. This is before he was Tom Hanks. Uh, and The conclusion to that drama, that real-life drama, was when three Navy SEAL snipers 
took out those three Somalian pirates with a perfectly coordinated boom, 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 three shots. And everybody around the world watched this happen on CNN, which just fascinated. Uh, Brandon was the guy who was training Navy SEAL snipers. He was a sniper himself. Um, by 2009, when that event happened, he was retired. And he and I were writing, and that's when we wrote his memoir. Uh, so, yeah, working with Brandon is fun because he, he's – you know, just an email or a phone call away from me, I can tap him anytime when I want to get the, you know, the facts, the authenticity of the of the naval experience, the sniper experience, the SEAL experience. Um, it, it's, you know, I get to live that life vicariously. I almost feel like I've been a Navy SEAL myself. I have not, for clarity's sake. <laughs> but uh, it is fun writing with Brandon. Um, and, and you mentioned the three environments, Marianne. It, it's, one of the things that we did when we started writing this series, it's the first fiction I've ever done. Uh, we decided that each book we wanted to take the reader on a tour, on an adventure, uh, on an excursion, really, to some completely alien, foreign, unknown, fascinating environment. And so for most people, an aircraft carrier is an alien world. It's like being in a hobbit shire, but it's this huge hobbit shire, of, a, a labyrinth of steel tunnels and wires overhead and and, and uh, steep ladders and 6,000 people climbing around this ant farm for six months at a time. Book two is Iceland, which, as I said, is fascinating. And book three, we're in Puerto Rico, which is so close and it's so familiar, and yet there's so much about it we don't know. And I, I, I really had a, a fabulous time learning about the sort of the political history, the social history, the 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 dilemma, sort of the national wound, if you will, of, of Puerto Rico, as well as the you know the gorgeous environment. Puerto Rico is is threaded all through the center of the island, this horizontal island, by a tropical rainforest. You know, it's the the only tropical rainforest on US soil. And it is US soil. Puerto Rico is um for all practical purposes, you might consider it a 51st state, although it clearly is not a state. But it is, um, you know, you travel from Miami to uh, to San Juan, you don't need a passport because you're just like going from Miami to Houston. So interesting how this book was written. When you and Brandon are working together to develop a new book, what does that look like? Yeah, it's it's kind of a three part process, and the first part is we brainstorm. Uh, we we come up with a you know, basic premise, like a setup for the story. Where are we going? What's the basic setup? Um, there's typically because all three of them are mysteries, they're thrillers and they're mysteries. We kind of work out what the reveal is at the end. We do kind of know the end from the beginning, um, and so we have the big picture of, of the story, and a lot of that comes from Brandon um, because there's something in his military history or in his decade as a as a military journalist now he's a, a civilian but he he runs a media company that is owned and run by veterans and it's all uh, military news world events world affairs and international politics and so forth so we draw something from his experience as a kind of a plot point and we build some characters around that and then part two is I go to my room and I'm off and running and, and I, I pretty much write the, write the book at that point. It's kind of my my job is to write. And as I said, I you know, whenever I need to give them a call or shoot an email and say, how would this work? Or what does that look like? Or if I took this little boat across the 10 miles of ocean in a hurricane, aside from being insane, what would that, <laughs> that be like? And, um, you know, he'll get back and tell me. He'll fill in the details so I can then write it. And then part three, when it's all done, you know, we sit back and look at what we got and, uh, you know, adjust, adjust as needed to, to get it ready for publication. Now, I, I mean, I know Blind Fear has been out for a little while. Is there any follow-up for this book or is that the end of this series? It's not the end of the series. Um, although, you know, again, as I said, I mean, you could almost end the series every, anywhere at the end of any book because each one kind of has its conclusion. Um, so if Brandon and I both suddenly got hit by an international bus, you'd still feel complete with these three. Uh, but yeah, we we have uh, four. Number four is in is in uh, process. Um, I can only say that the island of Malta 
may be involved and there may be uh, some experiences in a, in a very deep, dark dungeon, uh, as well as some extensive underwater experiences, which we really haven't done yet, which is crazy because that's what seals were born for. But um, but that's a ways off. So we don't we don't have a title yet. We don't know. You know, we don't have a date yet. Um, a lot of it is still in that murky, that murky place of of the beginnings of a book. Oh, I can't wait for that one. Malta. Ooh, that sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. on it's on my wish list of places to go. So I, I think that that will be so intriguing to have a book available, especially by the two of you, yeah. you know, both Brandon and, and yourself, that that just dives us into different places in Malta because there's so many little places there as well. Oh, it's one of those places that, you know, we think we know, but do we really? It's just it's very mysterious. So is there any idea of this becoming maybe a, a movie series or anything? Because I, I would think that it would be. I mean, it's so it just the books are so captivating. Well, I'm so glad you asked. And by the way, listeners, we did not plan this, but <laughs> since you ask, um, yeah, we do actually. We have a of course the writer's strike in Hollywood, which is the longest in, in Hollywood's history, has finally come to an end. Actors are still still on the line. It's it's not a resolved issue totally, but writers are back to work, and we have a deal with a major Hollywood studio um, that is currently in development for a television series based on the Finn books. Um, we have a fantastic showrunner, just a fabulous writer. Um, and uh, we've got a great studio. This is the studio that that created the series Mayor of Easttown, which was an Emmy-winning series, which is I highly recommend people watch. Um, so yeah, I don't know when, but at some point, Finn will, will come to the, the small screen. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Thank you for sharing that with us yeah. here today. I, and I think what's nice, it's kind of like when people, when you get so intrigued by a series, you want to see it on you yeah. know, TV or the silver screen, as they called it, or what have you. And to be able to get into the series and start reading it now, ooh, what a great place this is. And it's, it's really difficult to do. I mean, to, to translate a novel to screen is notoriously difficult. And you, you, you're always hearing, you know, uh, readers of those books bemoaning the adaptation saying, ah, they ruined the book. But, you know, the beauty of it is we're kind of entering, we've kind of entered a golden age of television writing. There is so much fantastic writing on the streaming uh, television platforms and even some of the network television platforms. Um, so, you know, if this were 10 or 15, 20 years ago, I would have been terrified to see the Finn books translated to screen, but now I'm I'm just overjoyed. I can't wait. It's it's really going to be going to be a great experience. Well, you're always working on so many amazing things, amazing projects. Do you personally have anything that's coming up? Yeah, I'm working on two things right now. Um, I'm working on a uh, another novel, another novel series. Uh, where this is just on my own. And uh, you know me, Marianne. I mean, I published over 30 books, and almost all of them have been partnerships with a co-writer. And so I'm excited about this one. It's going to be a series just just by me, uh, based in New England, of all strange places where I happen to live. <laughs> uh, and that's, uh, I can't say a lot more about that, but that will be a thriller, will be a mystery, and, and uh, uh, God willing, an, an ongoing series. Um and I'm, I've also I've developed a writing program, which I'm just smack in the middle of recording now uh, for for aspiring writers. I finally figured out a way to uh, to spend time with people and mentor them um, and try to translate reverse engineering what I do on paper and translating into a form where I can I can convey it to other people and support um, coming up writers. And that's that's very exciting for me. Oh, that's very exciting because I know so many people want to work with you. So this makes it a lot easier for you to work with a, a larger group of people in many it, ways. It's always been impossible. I mean, because you're right. I've had people who wanted to work with me and I want I love to work with people, but it's to to take someone on individually uh, in a coaching or mentoring role and work with them extensively is a demand on my time that I just can't manage. I couldn't get my books written. So I've, I've, as I say, I've, I've, I'm worked out a platform where I, it's a combination of recorded teaching and live coaching, and it's all online, and it goes for a year, and I'm, I, I could not be more thrilled. Well, of course, I want to talk more about all of your work, but we can't because we can't give spoilers <laughs> away. 
but I cannot wait for the next book to come out. Where can our listeners and readers connect with you and be part of your community and just make sure that they get in touch with you so when all these great things start to come to fruition, we're the first to know. Uh, yeah, my it's kind of my Grand Central Station is my website, which is just my name. It's johndavidman.com. Um, and on, on the, on that site, I have a newsletter. I send it out once a month. And basically every month I take a quote from a famous writer and just quote it and can kind of play with it and, and, uh, give a little homily on that, on that quote. Um, so all my books are there. I have a new book coming out. It's always there first. There is a separate website just for the Finn books. And that's called Web and Man, W-E-B-B-A-N-D. M-A-N-N, webandman.com. Uh, and that goes into a little more detail about the three, about the series of three books and uh, all of our podcasts and media appearances and, and so on. Um, but johndavidman.com will, will give it all to you. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. It's always my pleasure. I so appreciate you, Marianne. I love being on your show and I have no doubt we'll talk to each other again. Well, I have no doubt about that, too. It's always such a treat to talk with you. Make sure to pick up your copy of Blind Fear. It's available to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere books are sold. If you haven't read the rest of the series, pick up all three books. Make sure to visit John David Mann's website at johndavidmann.com or webandman.com. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break, and we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Are you an actor, public speaker, or an executive telling your story over Zoom? Jean-Louis Rodrigue and Scott Weintraub's new book, Back to the Body, takes the process they use to coach top Hollywood talent like Margot Robbie, Jack Black, and Ki Huey Kwan and makes it available to everyone. Using your body and its energy as a point of departure, your work will gain an enhanced level of performance and depth. Back to the Body, available on Amazon and wherever books are sold. Every day, pets are surrendered and abandoned. For these helpless and hurting animals, Paws Humane Society acts as a voice for the voiceless, providing hope for a brighter future. You can make a difference in the life of a shelter pet. Become a humane hero today. Just $10 a month will provide much-needed food, shelter, medical care, and love. It takes a community. It takes heroes like you. Together we can. Together we will. Together we are Paws Humane. Visit pawshumane.org to be a hero in every animal story. What if everything we think we know about addiction, depression, anxiety, and trauma is missing the one key element that will actually let you walk away from them for good? My name's Bob Gardner, founder of The Freedom Specialist and creator of a body-based approach that eliminates suffering and creates happiness, health, and well-being on autopilot. You can read all about it in my book, Built for Freedom, or start your own adventure toward lasting freedom at thefreedomspecialist.com. If you want to stop divorce fast, you do not need to waste years in therapy, you do not need to work on yourself, and you do not even have to have your spouse on board. If your spouse wants out, if they're filing for divorce, separation, or having an affair, what you need is a proven process to turn your marriage around. Book a free breakthrough session with us at highthrivecoaching.com slash apply. Dr. Richard London, who has 25 years of experience being known as the Man of Steel with the Heart of Velvet, presents the Life Wellness System, The Road to Yes, a mentoring system that brings you to becoming a wellness heir. Imagine having wealth, wellness, love, peace, and spirituality in abundance and balance now. Visit doctorateoflife.com or call 720-213-213. 8021 for a free 15 minute wellness evaluation. Announcing a revolutionary tool for wellness. Scalar Light has the ability to enhance and harmonize your own bio energies. With Scalar Light, you can get started in just minutes and begin feeling better the very next day. Scalar Light is a remote energy that gently and subtly works with your own body's bio energies, increases pro cellular wellness, and enhances your body's immunity. Experience the benefits of Scalar Light. Try a complimentary 15 day experience 
at scalarlight.com. In your hands lie ancestral patterns. These patterns shape how you think, what you struggle with, and experiences you love, your life pattern. We're going into the latest neuroscience of biological hand analysis, a realm beyond palmistry where science and the soul entwine. Hand analysis is the latest method to transform lifelong patterns. I am master hand analyst Brent Bruning. Join us and visit thepowerinyourhands.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work, and while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.